Welcome to another episode here on Your Digital Makeover. My name is Jerry Covert, and in today's episode, I'm going to be showcasing a cool little app for the Mac, and it's called Clean My Mac, and it's all coming up next. So in today's episode, I'm going to give you all a brief overview of Clean My Mac. So if you have a Mac and you are seeing that it is slowing down some, becoming a little sluggish, there is a nice little tool out there that you can purchase uh, that will help clean up your Mac and keep it in a nice clean state where it's not bogged down by um, processes that have uh, either ended and it hadn't ended them or what have you or little program bits that were never all the way uninstalled. It just kind of helps clean up junk files and this and that so that is clean my mac x right here uh, i guess x stands for 10 maybe i have no idea really uh but anyway uh this is the app right here and it sits up here in your system tray right up here okay and if you open it up all you have to do is click on here and then click the little uh icon down here and this will open it up right here or you can also do some of the uh, protections or some of these scans right here in this window as well all right so and a lot of times i do not have this completely open i just had i just come up here and take a look at some stuff uh like the memory i have available 15 gigabytes i can free up some more memory by just hitting that free up button right there i also see here that my mac startup drive is uh only got 88 gigabytes left so i could free up some of that if i wanted to I got some, like I say, some scanning here I can do. But most of the time, uh, if I'm not looking at just this data right here, I am actually inside the program. Okay. And in here, you have a smart scan. Now, if you do smart scan and by just hitting scan, it's going to do these three tasks right here. Uh, and so it's going to do a system junk mail and trash bin uh, thing. And, and it probably does a, a couple other things. But I don't usually use the smart scan. I like to go to each individual thing and just scan uh, there. Now, you can do the smart scan. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time. But sometimes I just really want to clear out my system junk. Or maybe I just want to focus on my mail attachments. Maybe I did system junk yesterday and I want to do my mail attachments today or what have you. Or the trash bins, right? So when you hit that, like for instance, if I click on trash bins and I hit scan, it's going to go ahead and start scanning and see it says I've I got 20 uh, megabytes here that um, it has figured out that probably I should empty. But what I typically don't do is I don't hit the empty. I want to see what it's doing. So I hit review details and it tells me, all right, look, these are the files here that you have in your in your trash that you can go ahead and empty. And I look at it and I say, like, yeah, that's about right. So I go ahead and hit empty and it goes ahead and clears those out. Okay. Same thing with uh, mail attachments. You can just hit scan here and it's going to scan your uh, mail client and determine whether or not you have anything in here that needs to be uh, cleared out. Uh, I don't really trust the results sometimes, so I might just skip that. You know, I say, man, that ain't really much of anything to worry about. And then system junk, same thing. You just hit scan, and it goes and scans your whole system looking for junk files, you know, like that are in system logs or what have you. Um, it's very, very useful to do this every once in a while, but still, once it gets done doing all the system junk files and figuring out what's junk on your computer, I don't go ahead and empty all of it. I review it line by line so I don't accidentally erase something that didn't need to be erased, okay? And what I mean by that, there are some programs, because I'm a photographer, there are some of my programs that rely on some of that junk files um, to help the program work. And I know that because I've accidentally erased them before. So I know it. And there's very few files that this affects on program-wise, but um, it does affect this to some degree. So I won't hit the clean right now. I'll just go in here to review details. And I'll go down this list and see what it is. And typically, I hit deselect all. It deselects all of these. And then I kind of go in here and say, all right, downloads. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not a problem. I can go ahead and clean that up. So I'll go ahead and do it separately, right, one by one. 
just like that. Then it says review remaining items. Well, yes, I do. So now I go to the user cache. Now, what does it say here? It says originally intended to improve startup times, the cache files of your applications ultimately accumulate and result in improper functioning or an overall performance drop. So I look through these and I say, you know, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to do that. But so I think what I'll do is I will select this, but I'm going to take off this one. Dropbox, screen flow, final cut. I'm going to take off Adobe. I don't want to do either. See how I'm doing this? I'm just kind of, kind of going through. Going through them all. Yeah, it looks good, looks good, looks good. And then all I'll do is hit clean, but I'm not going to do it right now because I'm not going to review it all and have you all sitting there like, is he ever going to get done? <laughs> Anyways, so if I go to Universal Binaries, uh, this says the moment uh, Apple introduced their own family of processors, developers had to put two versions, okay, two codes, basically. This allows to support both Intel and Apple Silicon. Your Mac only needs one of these copies. Well, on this situation, I am confident that I can erase all of these and it's not going to affect me because it's using the right one because I have an Intel. So I can delete the actual uh, Apple Silicon uh, version of the programs. Okay. And so that's all I do is I select them all and I just hit clean. And then it'll take its little time, you know, five seconds later, 10 years later, 100 years later. It's still working. See, still working. It's still thinking about it. La, 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 la. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. We're still working on it, though. Maybe I'll speed this up in post. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep talking. Maybe you'll like that. I don't know. But, uh, yep, so now I'm done. All right, and then I just hit review remaining items and get back to here. Now you see that's gone. Then I go to the language files. Now, one thing about the language files, it has these in here. Like in other languages that your uh, applications can sometimes use. I've erased this a thousand, billion, zillion, quadrillion times, and uh, it's still here. So don't even bother. Just my advice. System cache. Uh, it says system application generates and keeps a lot of cache files, which ultimately result in large startup times and overall performance drop and sometimes improper functioning. You can feel pretty confident that you can uh, you know, erase those without any issues. Okay. And then you go down to user logs and system, but I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, it's the same process. I just go through and, and decide whether or not I want to do it or not. Also, you have a malware remover here. You have a privacy thing that uh, looks at your browser history. And also, one I want to showcase here is optimization. You got uh, where you can view all 44 items, and it'll show you what you can optimize in this area. Maintenance is really useful. This is what I use a lot of times. You can free up RAM, free up purgeable space, uh, run maintenance scripts, flush DNS cache, speed up mail, re-index spotlight, repair disk permissions, and you have all your disk drives down there. Uh, uninstall is very useful as well. A lot of times when you uninstall a program, it doesn't uninstall it all the way, even on a Mac. So what you can do here is go to the uninstaller and if you want to install a, a, an app, I would probably uninstall it from here rather than just going over here to the launch pad and then holding uh, one of these icons down until you get the X. Because sometimes some of these icons won't give you X. It won't give you nothing. It won't. It's not able to be uninstalled. And then other times it is. Um, it's just better just to go like that. And then if you have done this and gone in here and uninstalled one of the apps through this way or through the Finder, all right, which you can also go to Finder into the applications here and delete it. Sometimes it'll leave leftovers, sort of like a TV dinner, I guess. So you go here to leftovers here in this uh, application here, and you can delete anything that was left over that was not deleted when the program was uninstalled. So all you do is just click on them and hit uninstall, and it will uninstall those leftovers. Okay. Pretty easy stuff. 
Um, I suggest always deleting the leftovers while you have them because you've already deleted the main program, right? Also, it's got a little thing here, unused. It shows all your apps that you have installed that you have not used in case you want to uh, maybe go through and clean up your system and delete stuff that you've never used before. You can do that as well. I don't, but you can. It also shows you if you have any 32-bit programs on your 64-bit machine, and I do have one. And then it puts uh, suspicion here. I mean, what isn't foreign? And that's what it says. This is associated with Russian or Belarusian developers. Okay. So, I mean, we have a lot of China stuff too. I, but I digress. I ain't going to get into any of that. But And so you have all this kind of stuff, right? Updater is very useful because sometimes um, you don't have any idea if some of your apps need updating because it won't show up in your, um, your app store, okay? Uh, maybe you've actually downloaded it from the internet and installed it that way and not through the app store. So this is a uh, nice, easy way for you to just click on one and hit update and it'll update that app for you. Extensions, I don't use. Maybe somebody has use for it, I don't know. You also have Space Lens. Uh, this uh, gives you a virtual or a visual size comparison of your folders and files in a quick tidying up fashion. You also have large and old files, so you can scan and see what your large and old files are. Maybe you want to take them off your uh, hard drive or whatever. And then you also have Shredder that helps you erase sensitive information. Uh, later on in uh, future episodes, I will go over each of these areas in more detail. Uh, but I just kind of want to give you all a brief overview of the Clean My Mac uh, for, um, for Mac. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And like always... Don't forget to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more of these episodes in the near future, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And hit that notification bell if you want to get notified of any upcoming episodes. And with that being said, I want to wish you all a wonderful week. And I'll catch you next episode. Take care. Bye.